And Jesus departed to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself, and from them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called a zealot, and Judas, the son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And he came down with them and stood on a stretch of level ground. A great crowd of his disciples and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And even those who were tormented by unclean spirits were cured. Everyone in the crowd sought to touch him because power came forth from him and healed them all. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus and Mary. I bet we all have that same desire to reach out and to be able to, to touch our Lord like those who lived in Palestine at the time of his own life on earth were able to do. And we reach out to him and maybe we feel sometimes that the 2,000 years of, of time and all that space that separate us from him don't allow us to make that contact. And we forget that our Lord, the omnipotent God, actually reaches out to us and he allows us to make that contact with him across time and space, and he allows us to do that in the sacraments, in the seven sacraments that he instituted. And, and then all that time and space that seemingly separate us from him actually disappear, and it's he who, in those seven sacraments, says to us and actually performs in us those works of salvation, starting with that cleansing of which St. Paul speaks, that being washed of our former way of life, which happens in baptism, the forgiveness of sins that we commit as Christians, which happens in confession, the nourishing of our souls with his body and blood, which happens in communion, and so on in the seven sacraments. It's our Lord himself who connects with us and allows us to, to touch him and to feel his power, which comes from his sacred humanity. And because these sacraments are given uh, to the church to preserve and to administer through its often unworthy ministers until the end of time, it's still in the church, in the Catholic church, that we are able to find Christ most fully that we are able to, experiencing, to experience him personally, and it's in the church that we are able to find salvation and, and nowhere else. No matter how unfaithful the administrators of the sacraments might be, it's Christ who acts through these sacraments, and we should always have that vision of faith uh, when we receive them. Now we're at Mass, we're privileged with being able to, um, to receive the body and blood of Christ, to participate in his own sacrifice on Calvary and to be nourished by his body and blood. Let's have that, that strong faith that when we do that, when we receive the sacraments, it's Christ himself who touches, reaches back out to us. And if we do that with faith in the sacraments, we'll be able to experience the power that comes from Christ's humanity that can heal us, strengthen us, sanctify us, and make us worthy of that eternal life which he wants us to possess in heaven. Praised be Jesus and Mary.